Yep. Okay, it's 6.30. I'm going to call the meeting to order of the City of Columbia virtual meeting for the Plan Commission for today's date, which is December 14th, 2020. And with that, I would ask our secretary to uh, call the roll, please. Doug Garmer. Here. Hal Hoppy. Check your mute, Al. <laughs> Is Hal here? I do not see Al here. Okay, Pete Ingold. Pete's looking for the link. Beth Cutter Sanchez. We know she's going to be absent today, I believe. Yes. Amy Missler here. Tony Murphy. <laughs> Here. Lauren Noby. Here. Will Trowbridge. Here. Andrea Yoakum. Here. Okay, with that, I do declare a quorum. We have six present of the commissioners. And with that, I'd like to move on to uh, item 3A. I call that to your attention. That is the <clears throat> approval of the minutes from our last get together on November 9th, regular meeting. Did everybody have a chance to look at those? Do they have any input, questions, or comments? Sounds like a resounding no. I do have one comment. Um, this is in general, I guess, going forward. Not sure if it's even needed, Scott. This is kind of directed towards you. Um, I know that we're under some sort of state law requirement that um, at least one of us from the commission or um, maybe the admin or, or other needs to be present um, in order to make this valid. So I would like to uh, pose the question that, would it be wise for us to put who is actually here in the office um, during each one of these? I know we're gonna have this on video, but sometimes the video doesn't pan the entire room. And I thought that maybe if we could have it in the notes saying on site or something like that, it might just make a quick go back stare it's not a have to, I guess, but it's more of a question. Maybe you could float it to the staff. Sure. Yeah, I'll mention that to Connie. That it'd be worth doing just in case there ever was a question. It's just easier to go back and look at the notes, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no other comments, I would ask uh, that somebody propose a motion to approve those minutes, please. I, Andrea Yoakum, propose that we are. Make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Thank you. Anybody, any seconds? I'll second it. That was Lauren, by the way. Sorry, Amy. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, um, whenever you're ready, Amy, we can do a roll call on that. All right, uh, Doug Garmer? Yes. Hal Hoppy, I think he's absent, right? Mm -hmm. Pete Engold, absent. Um, Beth, absent. Amy Missler, yes. Tony Murphy? Yes. Lauren Noby? Yes. Will Trowbridge? Yes. Andrew Yoakum? Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Moving on to number four of our, of our agenda is the public input portion. So I would ask at this point, Scott, to read any written comments or questions he got uh, not concerning the items in the agenda tonight, any direct participation requests, or there's nobody here to a comment. So <laughs> it would be all virtual comments, Scott. Did anybody have anything well, other than? Uh, I would note, Doug, that it looks like uh, Pete's on as an, intend as an attendee if, uh, James would like to move him over to panelists. Okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, looks like it, I'll move Julie in gold is who he typed his name as.
let me know before. Pete, can you please test your microphone? You there, Pete? You there, Pete? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. okay. Thank you. No, there are no uh, uh, comments. Uh, the only comments that were submitted to uh, staff are included in the uh, staff report for this item. Gotcha. All right, thanks, Scott. No public hearing, so we're gonna move on to new business. That's uh, item 6A that I'm gonna call for your uh, uh, participation in. This is the pre preliminary subdivision plan for the Ogle Estate subdivision. And at this point, I would ask that anybody that had any uh, potential ex parte communications this week or recently concerning this item. Now would be your chance to speak up and let us know. Sounds like nobody. Scott, can you present the staff report, please? Yep, um, I will. And uh, James, if you want to let John in as a panelist, uh, you're welcome to. Okay. Um, I, I'm not going to go too deep in the weeds in this one. Most of you have seen uh, one redevelopment in the last uh, year uh, on this property, at least a proposal uh, by the same applicant. The applicant was successful in renegotiating everything. Uh, uh, that applicant happens to be John Picker um, with GL, JLP Homes uh, and reconfigured everything to a straight R5 uh, residential subdivision which the reason it was, um, the primary reason it was uh, denied last time was the density of the, the senior villa. Uh, the proposed senior villa was a little, um, was quite a bit higher than R5 would have allowed. And that seemed to be the primary sticking point with the, um, although that it passed out of this, out of the commission, it did not get approved by city council uh, for that primary reason. Um, so this is the second stab with a straight R5 zoned uh, subdivision. Um, there were notice letters sent to uh, owners of the nine adjoining property. I did receive one comment by email, which was attached to the packet, um, which really has nothing we can address because there, none of them are addressed by concern. Well, somewhat. None of them are addressed by, uh, none of their concerns were uh can be addressed by this subdivision code, except for the fact that it's suffice it to say staff does have some concerns about lot one as well. And I'll get, um, I'll get into that a little bit uh, in a little bit. Um, the preliminary plat um, in terms of lot sizes, yard setbacks and those sorts of things is consistent with the R5 uh, zoning regulations. Uh, so we're not recommending any changes um, to those things. Um, and in general, the preliminary plat, it complies with the subdivision code. Um, however, there are some staff review comments that do need to be addressed. And I'm gonna preface this, typically this, uh, we do this a little bit differently in that we would pull together a list of comments to be addressed and try to get a round of, of revisions before we present them to the, the commission. Um, we're going on back to that COVID issue, COVID, uh, can, uh, uh, happenings, occurrences at City Hall, which really hampered our, our typical um, coordination process amongst staff. So we couldn't really do the process we normally do that you're used to seeing. Um, so this is really the first review comments that even the applicant has seen. Um, and um, our, the consensus uh, amongst staff was that let's go ahead and do it this way so that we're not penalizing the applicant, putting him a month behind um, when it was really a, a COVID related issue. So we decided to go ahead and present this way, uh, handle it and ask you to handle it the same way that you have in the past, whereas we would approve it on a conditional basis meeting uh, based on meeting the uh, remaining conditions of approval, which after review at this time are, um, we're asking for some sort of correspondence from the Corps of Engineers indicating what the reg regulatory requirements are gonna be for the blue line stream that cuts through the property. Um, in particular, it's gonna be lot one 
that is impacted by that stream because from there it goes into the uh, the pond there and then into a drainage uh, detention basin before going uh, further downstream. Um, we are asking that they show March Court on the plat. Um, a, it's a requirement to show streets, uh, but also B, we need to verify that it is in compliance. I know the earlier version it was, presuming everything is in the same place, the street is in the same place it was, uh, then it does meet the 125 foot street offset requirement, but we do need them to illustrate that on the plat. Um, we need the eight inch water line to be shown um, connecting along uh, to the main along Valley Drive. Uh, and that will require an easement through the adjacent property, which is also owned by the applicant. Um, we need to have the drainage detention basin to be on common ground and it needs to be labeled as such so that uh, it is shown that it is owned and managed by the HOA and as it's uh, drawn and it does appear to be on a, um, a private lot. Um, there needs to be a drainage easement that um, goes from the lake overflow to the detention basin. Um, underground utilities should not be going underneath the street. They should be placed in um, around the cul-de-sac in utility easements on both sides of Oval. Um, we need to have sidewalks included on both sides of Oval Lane around the cul-de-sac and uh, along the south side of Eckerd. And um, this last one is going to require some coordination between staff and the applicant and um, the follow-up letter we will send with the additional things will fall largely under this point. That is additional documentation and revisions may be requested prior, prior to the plat being considered by council. We're going to have to do that. Staff has some pretty serious, we've got some concerns about lot one in particular. Um, technically, it meets the zoning requirements. However, we need, a, we need more detail on how they're going to handle the drainage. We need detail. Um, I, um, the city engineer was concerned about the grades and perhaps not being uh, illustrated correctly or somewhat. Uh, we'll, we'll clarify that in a, um, in a comment. Um, if John's listening, well, and you can ask uh, when, when we turn it over to you for your, um, to present the application, if there's anything further you'd like to say. But uh, uh, based on that review, um, as I mentioned prior to beginning uh, a presentation, we are recommending um, that you adopt the staff findings and recommend approval um, subject to the following conditions. And that is that the applicant shall address the staff review comments that we mentioned. Um, including the ones that we're going to have upcoming prior to city council and uh, be sure to um, coordinate with the city engineer to ensure um, adequate provision of utilities and infrastructure prior to the submittal of the improvement plans and some of those items uh, that were outlined in the staff review comments are also going to be uh, need to be illustrated on the um, preliminary plat before uh, plan uh, before city council um, reviews it as well. So with that, I'll um, uh, leave it up, turn it back over to the um, Chairman Garmer to. Uh, Thanks, Scott. So do any of our commissioners have any uh, questions for Scott? I don't have a question for Scott. I do have a couple of questions for John uh, related to some of the things Scott mentioned. Just I want to make sure I've oriented this correctly. Um, so whenever it's appropriate for that, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to you. This was, that was uh, Will, right? Yes, it was. Okay. Thanks, Will. Anybody have anything for Scott? Yeah, I was wondering, Scott, if you could tell me how many lots there were in the previous rendition. I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, John, maybe. I, I, I wanted to say there was like 30, around 30. John, may be able to clarify that? Yeah, I, I can look up the exact number, but plus or minus. Yeah. Can everyone hear me, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah, we can, John. Thanks. Thank you. Scott, question. I know you said that, um, let's see, the application I, sa I saw said um, R5 and A1, but do all 10 of these qualify? There's no as one anymore. It got, re it got rezoned with the, the last okay. time we considered it. The uh, city council did approve the rezoning. They did not approve the community unit plan. Okay. So that's... 
the zoning district listed on the front sheet there is just R5. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is, I guess, basically a, a comment on one of the uh, staff review comments is I was looking at that flag lot and I know it said the, the sidewalk, the intention is there to, the, to go as far as the extent of the property there. I assume that it would end and then the access to Eckert for that flag lot that would be the last piece or I know we're not that far along. Was that what you're, was that? Right. The, it, it's going to run all the way to the property line because uh, yeah. it's going to be con a concrete driveway. So. Okay. Okay. And it looks like there's four off of Eckert and six off of the uh, Ogle lane. That's what I see. Lots. Yeah. That's what uh, I, uh, ingress, egress mm -hmm. four off of Eckert and six off of the, off of the cul-de-sac. That was kind of a statement slash question, not really. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm just looking for the plat in my. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. There it is. Okay. And then um, anybody else jump in? I'm sorry for monopolizing here, but it looks like that common ground that you propose is that uh, retention basin is in the back of 10, right? As currently shown, yeah, it needs to be a separate lot. And by the way, that there needs to be an access easement to it as well. I mean, I suppose technically there probably is since the easement goes around the property that that would probably suffice. And that is where my question comes in as well, so. Okay, so if nobody else has any questions for Scott, I'm gonna um, quickly swear in Mr. No need to swear in. This is not a public okay. hearing, Doug. Okay, cool. So, John, do you pronounce your last name Petker? Uh, Petker. The O is silent. Okay, cool. I was right. So, now would you be your chance, John, to go ahead and uh, present your case? Do you have anything to add? or? Um, I mean, as Scott stated, you know, thankfully there's no variance request here. It's pretty straightforward R5 development. Uh, all the notations in the staff review comments that Scott went over individually, we have no issue with. Um, we will get those incorporated into a revised preliminary plat. And uh, I got to talk to Scott through timelines, but we're hoping to submit that revised preliminary plat middle to end of next week, hoping that'll be satisfactory for the next scheduled city council meeting, but no issues with any of those items. Okay, uh, I, believe, I believe one of our timeline though will be uh, the the first uh, council meeting in January. Yeah, if I if you receive it, in, with yeah before Christmas, will that give you guys enough time to get it out, Scott? Uh, assuming you've made, you, as, assuming you've complied with the requests, yes. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Will, did you have a question then for Mr. Petker? I do, and I'm going to need to share a screen. Let's see if it'll allow me to do that. Um, give me one second here. I'm sorry. It's always something, isn't it? All right, share screen. Share. All right. So, is everyone seeing Google Maps? Yes. Okay, Mr. Petker, if I'm correct. Okay, so Valley Drive, correct, right here? That retention pond is going to be in this neighborhood? No. Further to the right or to the east? Yes, sir. So this area? Yes, sir. Okay. So the blue line stream you're referring to is not the stream that currently runs right here? That was not the one we were referring to. Okay. It is not. All right. So this area here on Valley, though, this is part of the development as well. Isn't lot 10 like right here or am I too far down? No, the it, in the middle of the the field there, where you can kind of see the hay bales. Yes, sir. Approximately, there's a line that runs north and south that divides the subdivision, which would be to the east, and then there's another parcel to the west. That's not oh. part of the development. Okay, so where um, the blue line stream does it connect to the one on Germania here, or is it a different blue line? To my knowledge, it terminates into the pond, but Scott could answer that probably better than I. Technically, the the maps are a little bit older. I believe it does uh, continue on from there, and I think maybe the overflow from the pond actually feeds into it. But it's hard for me to show you what uh, where my 
my understanding of where it is from looking at the maps and everything. But I do believe you're correct. It would go down from the um, the current pond. It would spill over into the detention um, as needed, and then eventually make its way out. I believe, but um, that's the way that the uh, so the core maps uh, are the um, uh, the quarter section maps have they're older than any of this development. So it follows yes. Line. So it's hard to know exactly what they're, once a pond gets built and is detaining the majority of water coming through, it's hard to, it's hard to continue following a line at that point. Yeah. And here, let me just real quick, just show you what my concern is. So you see this blue building here, the, this back here, I can see the grading work being done through here. So you're, you're looking at the area where the development will be. This is what occurs currently from the drainage in that area. That's over my, that's over the next door neighbor's yard. Now, I don't know if that's from the Petker property or from the Ritter property, which is directly behind this, but there is definitely a, a drainage issue. And that was my concern about where that retention pond was gonna be and where the overflow pipe was going because there already is a drainage situation feeding into the overflow that runs basically behind Germania Drive goes and you know it goes underneath Rick, Rick Road and Valley Drive. So I was just concerned about it um, exacerbating an existing issue if that makes sense. Mr. Trowbridge, can I ask where, where was that video um, shot at approximately? I didn't follow. It okay either. so if you're still looking am I still showing you the Google map here? Yeah I yeah. can see yes sir. Okay it was shot right here. Okay. So this is the Ritter property, if you're familiar with that. Correct. And then here's the homes that I'm assuming are staying on Valley. And then here's the pond and everything. So there's that creek that runs along here. There's that stone bridge. And then this is the overflow that comes from the Ritter pond. And then the other creek comes in somewhere along here. And I don't know if that's overflow from your property or from Ritter's, but it's it's an issue, um, which the city engineer is aware of, but I wanted to see if I was, really my question was, am I talking about the same thing? And that's gonna be a question for the city engineer, Will. Okay, and I'll forward this back to him with that, but I figured I just wanted to make sure, I didn't want to tie up everybody's, you know, with the city engineer if I was looking at it incorrectly, if that yeah, makes if sense. Yeah, you wanted to share that with Chris uh, Smith and I. Um, I will I'll send an email tomorrow morning or tonight. That worked. But uh, the short answer to your question is that um, as provided everything meets the, the code is that it would not worsen the situation because they're required by code to prove that their, uh, their, their runoff will not leave the development at a, at a higher rate than it currently does. Exactly. So I just wanted to, yeah, I, I was just having trouble putting the pictures on top of each other. So gotcha. thank you. Thanks, Will. Anybody else have anything for Mr. Petker? So you guys are gonna be working closely, Scott, with, with Mr. Petker, and it sounds like uh, we have a general timeline for if this gets approved to go to city council and then uh, have these eight, eight items uh, worked with hand in hand together to resolve whatever potential issues would pop up or, and then at that point you'd present it to them with a, a, a kind of like an altered uh, comment section or how would you do that with them to say we dealt with these eight? Essentially the process would be no different than it is. We're, we mm -hmm. just left out one round of revisions because okay. of the coordination concerns. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Essentially you'd be approving it subject to these conditions and we made eight deliberately vague and, and all encompassing so that we could address the issues um, and, and that uh, the city engineer would, would be able to address the, in particular, the issues he has on the, uh, the drainage. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, well, I guess at this point, if uh, Scott, I would ask you, was there anybody that you know of that wished to speak in favor or opposition or you had any written comments or questions or any direct participant requests? 
the the one um, uh, email that was included mm -hmm. in the um, the packet, right? Um, and they're they're specifically looking at lot one. And to be frank with you, their concerns are the same as ours. Mm -hmm. So that's what the the city engineer is already um, kind of thinking about to uh, work with the applicant, work with John and, and his engineer on. So um, that's something that we're, we, we were already looking at re, um, before they even submitted it, but it's good that people actually, it's good to know people actually read those letters when we send them and, and actually respond to them. I'm just trying to see, was that, that was not one of the eight requirements or requests or review comments, was it? What's that? dealing with that issue not specifically like i said mm -hmm. we weren't sure exactly what it was because uh, uh I, I didn't exactly know how to write up what the city engineer's concerns were so i, I left a pretty vague so that he could talk with with him directly okay and it looks it's like engineering stuff right it kind of looks like your second bullet point on the staff recommendation speaks to that as well. Or at least a bit, it can be construed to speak to that. Yes, yes, okay. definitely. Okay, so nothing else, right? At this point, I would ask then the commissioners, this would be your final chance at deliberation on this uh, item amongst ourselves. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to discuss at this point? Jump right in, unmute and jump in if you do. Is anybody waving frantically, James? On... No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well then, um, there's nothing else at this point. I would entertain a motion uh, on this item 6a if someone would be so inclined and I if so I would encourage you to uh, look at the recommendations uh, that Scott set forth and I don't think we need to <laughs> repeat all the eight review comments but specifically the two bullet points would be sufficient you want to somehow incorporate that into your uh, motion I'll make a motion, Doug. This is Amy. Um, I'll make a motion to recommend approval of the Ogle Estates preliminary sub subdivision plat, subject to um, subject to the the condition set forth in the staff recommendation. How about that? That sounds pretty, pretty good. Okay. This is Lauren. I'll second that. Thank you, Lauren. All right. And Amy, whenever you're ready. One sec. Sure. All right, Doug Armour? Yes. Pete Engel? Yes. Amy Missler, yes. Tony Murphy? Yes. Lauren Noby? Yes. Will Trowbridge? No. Andrew Yoakum? Yes. All right, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Mr. Petker. Appreciate your time. All right. With that, 
I would like to call item 6B to your attention. And that is the architectural review for a 24 seven on-site camera located at 320 East Locust. And as usual at this point, I would ask that you report any ex parte communications you may have had concerning uh, this item. Now is your chance. Sounds like nobody, no one, whatever the proper grammar is for that. Scott, staff report, please. Okay. Um, this property you'll recognize as a property that was included in a rezoning the city recently initiated. Uh, this is the site, this specific site is the site of the <coughs> mix, which uh, a local company, 24 seven on site camera has purchased um, to use as their new, um, their new facility. Um, to go along with that, they, uh, the first thing they would like to, well, I should say the second thing they'd like to do, if you, I don't know if any of you actually had the chance to look at the, uh, the time-lapse video the applicant provided, but I think that was pretty, um, it was very illustrative of the amount of work they've actually done on the site to date. If any of you can recall just a short time ago, <laughs> that place looked nasty yep. <laughs> and uh, it's already looking much, uh, much better. And we definitely appreciate that. And to go along with that, basically the, um, the first, the second thing then they're wanting to do uh, besides the cleanup is uh, construct a new office uh, building on the site. Um, and uh essentially what they're asking for, there's a full packet there where that even includes a site plan. So um, what they're, the very, the, um, what they're asking for today is to have approval to do um, vertical metal siding, uh, which is not on the list of um, allowable exterior building materials. Um, but that's what this process is for. And they're showing um, a, it's basically, it's, it's three foot two inch, sorry, rain coating uh, that goes around the front of the building and the, the side of the building that faces the trail. And they're asking to leave it off the other side says it doesn't face the trail and it doesn't face a public right of way. Um, and basically, I, I, I just have to say compared to what we had and what we get, um, uh, and the location and setting, there's still going to be a line of trees between the street. Um, just the, the cleanup, uh, I, I've got to say, I, I couldn't be happier <laughs> with seeing this. <laughs> um, I'm uh, wholeheartedly recommend, uh, the staff recommendation is, uh, that acting in your capacity as the architectural review board, uh, adopt the staff recommendation of approval and allow the request a deviation from the building material requirements. So there we have it. Okay, thank you, Scott. Uh, at this point again, entertain questions from the commissioners for Scott. Did, uh, did Brian get put on as a panelist? Yeah, he's here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So oh, there he is. Didn't anyone swallow. have anything for Scott? Hi guys, thanks for having me on. Thank you. If nothing for Scott, Brian, do you have anything in addition you'd like to add to what was just stated to help your case? Uh, I, I don't really. Um, it, yeah, we're going in with metal. Um, if you've seen the renderings. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of has the feel of what's there. I think he's looking to maybe paint the existing building as well. Um, and it's going to be the exact same size almost right next to it uh, with a connecting link there um, in between a breezeway to connect his two buildings. Um, and he's going to um, basically have his offices at the front portion. And um, then the warehouse will be where he manufactures his um, basically the, the equipment that goes out and gets shipped out where trucks come to pick it up. He's going to use the other little building to the side for his IT guy's office. And he kind of um, has this guy that programs this stuff and puts them onto these poles and their equipment and sends them out. So um, basically, 
he came to me, he found something he liked and his wife off the internet that kind of has a rustic look to it. Um, and we just kind of drew up exactly what he wanted and trying to get it, you know, put through. I don't think much really shows from the street with that line of trees he wants to keep. There's a very narrow window where the rolling gate is that you would actually see the building on an angle um, as you're driving down Locust. Otherwise, you would see some of it maybe from uh, the bike paths. Um, and then, of course, um, he's already moved, like you said, all the fencing and gates and stuff where he was traversing, I think, uh, Tim from MEI's property there. Um, that will no longer be the case, crossing the path. Um, he's going to be coming in his own entrance there in the front. So pretty much it. And Brian, what's your, um, what's your capacity there at 24 seven? Um, I'm, I'm his architect. Okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not actually an employee for. Okay. For Thank you. Anybody have anything for, um, Brian? Questions? Scott, did anybody uh, uh, express a willingness to express, to speak in favor, opposition, written comments, questions, obviously no direct participation requests, but anything like that? No notices, no notices are sent um, on this request, on this type of request, but uh, it is in the, uh, on the agenda and nobody expressed any concerns, uh, comment okay um commissioners do you have anything this is your, our chance to deliberate anything that you'd like to add or clarify or question or grill scott or brian on i guess i just have one thing um and this is on the request for the review application page the deviation is obviously the metal siding with uh, the Wayne, the wainscoting is not really the deviation, but the metal siding is. And I guess just uh, kind of fleshing out that idea, the existing metal buildings being painted, that really has nothing to do with the deviation. That's just telling you how, what the plan is to That's match it with, uh, with the uh, new building. I actually wrote that. He submitted it. Very eloquent. Because I knew Very what he wanted to do. Yeah. You're a blossoming author. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's just more clarification, Scott. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's exactly right. Ben. To marry it with the, uh, with the new, the projected or proposed new uh, facility. I mean, I looked at the renderings. They look nice. I will say I was on the you know, architecture review committee for a long time. And I, I honestly can't think of a time we ever allowed, you know, a metal variance. However, both the Legion and Turner Hall both have this type of uh, wall and parts of their buildings probably long before there was an ordinance and they don't even have the wainscoting. So it does fit in, you know, uh, with, the, with the existing area, which is what we've always tried to, at least in our test review, we always try to make sure at least, you know, it didn't stick out like a sore thumb and it, it, it won't, it'll, it's actually cutting off a sore thumb and making it look nice. Right. Thank you. That was one of my considerations as well. I might add in thinking up the recommendation is not only would we still be living with two metal buildings on the site, but one, you know, the next lot over and one across the street. So it's pretty much the same thing we'd be living with anyway. Only my only concern is, and I don't know where this falls in Scott under the ordinance, if it's ever been changed, but it's my understanding that, it's written as there is a hardship required to grant a variance such as this. It's not, not okay. There's not. No. Okay, I didn't know if that was a legal thing because I know we always looked at what the hardship was for variances on both you know signs and this. And there is obviously I don't believe there's a hardship, but I didn't know if that was legislative or just a suggestion. Nope. Okay. And Scott, can you restate again? You said it's not a, it's not a legislative. It's just a guideline or a I don't know it's not even in the code for architectural review there's no hardship requirement so right and well hey thanks for jumping in there I, I meant to ask that I know that or I thought that you were one of the people that we we had just were lucky enough to gain on the commission 
that was on that review board. And, and I thought Hal was, and who else? Is Liz else? was as well, Hal, Liz, and myself. And, okay. you know, the more I think about it, actually, I believe the hardship requirement is um, a zoning variance like decks and things on homes more so than on architecture now that okay. I talked, talked it out. That is true, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that, that's good. We have the input of our um, former architectural review board member. Anybody else have any discussion they'd like to throw out there? I have no previous fancy title of architectural review board, but I, um, I agree with Scott as someone who walks past this lot on a daily basis and drives past it as well. Um, they have done great things and I'm really, uh, these renderings make me really excited. So I'm really excited to see that little um, area of town that's kind of looked depressed for a while pick up, so. Thanks, Andrea. All right, if nobody else has anything, Going once, going twice. No? Well, then at this point, I would entertain a motion on this item 6B. And you can be as descriptive as you want, I guess. Um, you can toss in the, the deviation that's listed on there or phrase it however you wish. Everybody's shy tonight. You can even phrase it. I'd like to move that we accept the staff recommendation. You could. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and do that. I, I uh, move that we uh, accept staff's recommendation that the plan commission acting in our new capacity as the architectural review board and not without our own expertise here a little bit, thanks to some new members that we adopt the staff recommendation and allow the requested deviation uh, from the building material requirements. Andrea Yoakum, I'll second that. Thanks, Andrea. Amy, whenever you're ready. Second. I need to work out a, a system when we do this, like count to 20 before I say that, <laughs> or 30 or something. Don't mean to rush you. That was a lot of words I said, I know. All right, I'm ready. Um, Doug Garmer? Yes. Hal Hoppy? Oh, he's not here, sorry. PD and Gold? Yes. Beth, oh, Beth's not here either. Amy Missler, yes. Tony Murphy? Yes. Lauren Noby? Yes. Will Trowbridge? Yes. Andrea Yoakum? Yes. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your input. And thanks, Brian, for attending. Appreciate your input. Thank you too, Scott. All right. I've got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and I'm moving on. Scott, do we have any unfinished business committee reports, staff reports and communications or anything like that we need to discuss? We do not. We do not? No. All right. I would mention as Part of a staff report just thank everybody for muddling through with us on this whole virtual meeting thing and appreciate your uh your willingness to step up there uh doug at your and, service uh, and be and our james our one <laughs> our it director as well okay well, we've reached the point in the proceedings where I would entertain a motion to adjourn this proceeding. I'll make the motion. 
Thank you. Got a second there. Heck, I'll second it. <laughs> I'm not shy. We got to do the official vote on this, yep. I guess. Yep. Doug Garmer. Definitely yes. Pete Engold. Yes. Amy Missler, yes. Tony Murphy. Yes. Lauren Noby. Yes. Will Trowbridge. Yes. Andrea Yoakum. Yes. All right. Thanks again, everybody. And with that, I declare this meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. All right.